next uh, speaker is Zhang Wang from uh, Baidu, yeah. presenting a work on the video paragraph captioning with hierarchical recurrent neural network. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhang Wang. And I'm glad I'm here to present our work about video paragraph captioning using hierarchical recurrent neural network. And this work was mainly done by Hao Nan Yu, who was a summer intern at Baidu Research, and also in collaboration with Zihen Huang, Yi Yang, and Wei Xu, who were both uh, at Baidu Research. Uh, so first, let's uh, define the problem of video paragraph captioning. Uh, for example, like take example of this video, we want to generate uh, sentence descriptions for this video. Uh, for example, we can generate a single sentence, like the person cooked in the kitchen. And this is a perfect right answer and perfect right sentence, but this is not very useful because uh, we, without even look at the whole video, we can see that the person is cooking. This is so obvious. And in contrast, the paragraph captioning means that we can generate multiple sentences to describe the details of the uh, video. For example, for this video, we can generate the person took out the uh, board from a drawer, and then the person watched the cucumber, and the person sliced the cucumber, and the person put away the knife. And this detailed description is much more useful than the single sentence for the user to understand the video. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Mm. They're going to sleep? I went to sleep. <laughs> While we're solving this problem, if the author of the second talk uh, in the audience, could you please identify yourself? Uh, so uh, most of the state of art method are based on the best called sequence to sequence learning. The sequence to sequence learning does is that uh, it extracts uh, features for each frame of the video. So that makes it a uh, feature sequence. And then it uses uh, STM to encode the feature sequence into a single compact representation. And it uses uh, this compact representation into another decode STM to generate the sentence. And our methods are also based on this sequence to sequence framework. And there are also uh, some work about temporal attention to improve the video captioning performance. For temporal attention, uh, because uh, for each word, we may want to focus on different regions of the video. For example, for this uh, sentence, a man and a woman are talking on the road. And for the word, men and women, we may want to focus more on the first and second and the fourth frame. But for the word, uh, the talking and the road, we want to focus more on the third frame. And this is our framework. Uh, our framework contains two parts. The first part is uh, the first part is the sentence generator. The sentence generator uh, takes the uh, visual feature sequence and it uses the STM and attention to encode the visual uh, feature sequence into a compact representation, and then it uses STM to generate a sentence from this compact representation, and then we have another. Uh, par called paragraph generator. The paragraph generator takes the sentence embedding and then it uses the sentence embedding to model the dependencies of the sentences so that the sentences can affect each other. Oh. 
uh, I find some <laughs> something wrong because I think some slice is missing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make sure. OK, I just talk like that. <laughs> so the, the visual feature we are doing is that it has the object appearance feature and the action feature. The object appearance feature uh, is we use, use VGD features uh, between on email net. And the action features, uh, we use the 3D convolution neural network trained on the sports one mini data set. And we also use the uh, dense trajectory features. So let's go over the detail of the hierarchy RN. So for hierarchy RN, for each sentence, we have the current word. And based on the current word, we have the word embedding. And the word embedding together with the uh, paragraph uh, embedding and also the visual features, we can generate the next word. So in this uh, way, we can generate a whole sentence. And then after we generate a sentence, we get a sentence embedding from this sentence generator. And we use paragraph generator to uh, encode this embedding and, to, for, and the output are uh, embedding to affect the generation of the next uh, sentence. And then we use, we use the embedding and get the next sentence and get the next uh, uh, sentence. And you can notice that uh, all the parameters are shared in this model so that we don't have too many parameters. And also we can train our model in any kind of way so that we don't need to separate the sentence generating part and the sentence dependency part like the other method does. And for the attention model, uh, we learn the spatial and the temporal attention simultaneously. So the temporal attention is, uh, specifies which frame are important for the prediction of the next word. And for the spatial attention, it specifies which regions in the frame are uh, have interesting uh, interest in objects. Because in our work, we want to have a detailed description of the object. So we, we need to focus more detailed regions. So for example, like in this uh, video, if we are trying to predict the cucumber, we want to, uh, we want to focus on the second region, and we want to predict the hand, we want to focus on the third region. And this was done by using the uh, iron state of time step, T minus one, and also the region features of region, one, region I to predict the weight of each region. So that our, our weight uh, depends on the next word we want to generate, and also based on the visual features we have. And, and this is uh, some example of our sentence embedding. And we can say that uh, for the sentence with, some, with higher, higher correlations, for example, like the person filled a bar with the water, and then the person filled the lemon in the place, they have a uh, they have small distance, but with sentence with, uh, with that are different from each other, it has light distance. distance. So we perform our experiment on two data sets. Uh, the first data set is the YouTube 2 text data set. Uh, it's an open domain data set. It contains uh, uh, 2,000 videos, and it, but it only has one uh, sentence for a video. We also tried on a data set called Tacos Multi-Level Data Set. It's a closed domain data set which only contains cooking videos, uh, but it has several dependent sentences in our, vi in our video. And this is our uh, experimental result. Uh, you can see that on both data sets, we outperform the previous data method by a large margin. And also, we compare our method with the uh, with, uh, sentence, uh, independent sentence generator method. Uh, we can say that our method also outperforms the independent sentence generator method. So this is our examples of the sentence generator. So this, uh, the, f uh, the first uh, example is the sentence generated by independent RN. And the second, though, is uh, the sentence generated by hierarchical RN. I say that it can uh, correct some mistakes using the context information. For example, in this case, the person first uh, pick out the cutting board, but the second uh, sentence is the person picking out the cutting board and also pick up the, the life, which cannot be happened. But our method using the dependencies, it can correct the result. So, oh, this is not slide. <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, this is not the uh, right slide. <laughs> OK, so I'm ready to take questions. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, so. So uh, the question is that uh, how important is Helvati RN in, uh, in comparison with independent RN for each sentence? And we actually have an experiment on that. If you can pull up the slides. Uh, so not in the bench, you could still have, you, you could still predict four sentences, one after the other, and not add this paragraph. Like oh, you mean that you ca we can just uh, treat, uh, it's a very long sentence and predict that? Yeah. Uh, we didn't try that, but uh, imagine that our math should be better. We, we will try that. More questions? Okay, uh, let's thank the speaker again. Okay. I, I think it's very symbolic that the most computer vision session got most problems with AV. Uh, <laughs> And um, let's try to disprove it. And let me introduce our next talk um, that is presented by Jimmy Young on learning to rotate uh, 3D objects. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to have this display here. So yeah, I, uh, I'm from Adobe Research. Actually, I just joined Adobe Research a month ago. So this is joint work with uh, University of Michigan and UC Merced. So, um, so actually, this is the pointer, right? OK, actually, um, our work is concerned with the 3D vision from a single image. We actually have two tasks. One is a 3D object recognition in a viewpoint independent way. Another one is a 3D object manipulation from single image. Or you can say a 3D view synthesis from single image. We are concerned with the two tasks. Um, it's well known that this is a very uh, challenging problem due to the partial observability inherent in project to the three uh, object onto image space, and then the eoposeness of the inferring object shape and the pose from single image. Okay, obviously the classic approach is to recover the three D shape from single image, or you can say this is a three D object reconstruction problem. But today um, I will take a different approach. Before that, uh, I would like to play with this small human vision test, given the two objects in the left row, the blue one and the green one. Could you guess which is the best match in A, B, and C? Any answers? For blue one, which one? How about the green one? Let's see the answer. A and V, mostly correct. Actually, um, I spent a couple of minutes to figure it out. You are really smart, actually. <laughs> so I think most people know that this is a very famous uh, mental rotation experiment established a long time ago. So people find out. Um, people, human being has the ability to rotate two objects in their consciousness to decide whether they are the same objects in different perspective or not. And also, the greater the angle the object is rotated, the longer it takes for human to identify. That's just a message we learned. So our solution is inspired by this uh, experiment. So we would like to join the model the 3D, uh, 3D recognition problem and the view synthesis. And also, we want to learn the distribute, distribute representations instead, instead of uh, recovering a 3D model. OK, so obviously, there's a deep learning approach. Um, so we know that the convolution network has remar remarkable ability to recognizing and even re generating objects. So we know that discrepancy and can produce 
a high level feature representation from single image. On the other hand, given high level abstract representations, such as class labels, viewpoints, and other transformation parameters, people has demonstrated that generative CN can produce object images. So our task is given the info image, we want to produce it rotates or transform the view. So obviously, this is the conventional encoder-decoder network. So given the input image, we have an encoder to produce high-level representations, where we can apply our transformation so that we have a decoder to produce rotated or transformed image. So I think this in high level, this idea is related to the transforming autoencoder, and this what where autoencoder just presents by Yang this morning, but we are a different kind. So the, the most di different, the, uh, the significant different part is we have this action units, which we control the transformation. Here is very simple uh, action units we define here. It's a three bits. It's a one zero zero means we want to rotate the input chair, turn left, with a fixed degree. If it's zero one zero means no operation at all. If it's zero zero one means we want to uh, rotate the input chair towards the right for a fixed degree. You see this example, it basically is a 15 degree we want to rotate. But how we can rotate the object even longer? Um, term. For example, suppose we want to rotate um, 45 degree. What should we do? Here, um, we allow this pulse units to be recurrent. This way, we can decompose this uh, 45 degree into three steps, three action inputs. So 001, 001, 001. It's obvious. So in this way, we have this recurrent neural network so that we can present a, tr uh, a sequence of different views of same objects for training. And at the same time, because there are still some units doesn't change with the viewpoint. We call uh, identity units, which we shared and across all the different views of in the same sequence. So we have this recurrence convolutional encoder decoder network. Note that the reason we call encoder decoder because it's not necessary that the encoder decoder are symmetric. So our training is more like a post manifold traversal. So we find out it's really difficult or challenging to train this recurrent neural network from scratch. So we decide to adapt this um, uh, curriculum training idea. So we gradually increase the difficult training by increasing the trajectory length present to the recurrent neural network. For example, here, we start training the um, one step rotation. And then given the model trains, we apply this two-step rotation sequence, and then so forth. So we can train this way. So at this way, we have a lot of models, RN1, RN2, RN4, and so forth. First experiment is on phase. So it's a multi-pi phase, as a well-known data set. We use 200 people for training, and 137 people for test. So for every person, we sample seven viewpoints uh, with neutral lighting and then expression. So we have our model is trained up to a six step rotation. You can guess it's from the negative 45 degree to positive 45 degree. Here we present two challenging cases. The first figure is a turning left from the 95, 40, uh, negative 45 degree to positive 45 degree, six steps. The top row is uh, ground truth, and then bottom row is the, our predicted results. And top, uh, the bottom figure um, is the turning left, six steps. It's very challenging, two cases. Here we can also compare with the 3D phase morpho model for, po for post-normalization. So given arbitrary uh, viewpoints of face, we can use our RN model to map or predict its uh, frontal viewpoints, which is in the middle row. And the bottom row is the result based on some MOFO model. So our current observation is that 
um, the 3D morphology model usually is sort of uh, sensitive to landmark localization. But obviously, they have better texture learned, transferred. Ours is a little bit blurry in this case. Here's another example. So our RNN usually produce very uh, clean results. OK, um, remember that our model, encoder model, can produce two group of features. One group of features doesn't change with the pose, so that we can use that group of features, identity features, to perform cross-view face recognition. So this is the result. We compare with the discriminant CN trained with uh, face labels. So in general, um, our model is slightly better than CN. We didn't very, train the model very hard. It's just a regular training. So, but in our model, we didn't use the class label at all. We just the kind of uh, uh, generative training. Now I present another more challenging data set, 3D chairs. We have a lot of chair instances rendered from a uh, CAT model. So each chair instance has uh, 60, 62 views. And we break down them half for training, half for test. So we also have the KN baseline. Let's take a quick look. That's our model. The left row is the input image. And all the others that render result generated by our model and KN. You see, our model can preserve the shape in a longer term very well with a sharp output. Even after uh, more than 180 degree rotation. But KN obviously has some blurry results in this case. Here's the quantitative result. We compare reconstruction error with CN and then uh, KN. Well, after I was done training with uh, 16 steps in data sets, our model RN16 achieved significantly better reconstruction um, performance than the KN model. Same idea to the face. We can apply the um, identity units from chair model for chair style recognition. So we also compare with, with VGGNet. So our model is slightly better. But no, uh, notice that it's very challenging because chairs are so similar to each other. One interesting result is you see the one the angle offset, the x-axis, uh, greater than 120 degree. The CN performance is better than our model. The reason is obvious, actually, because when we train the VGNets or actually uh, CN model, we use a mirroring data augmentation. So basically, their model is a mirror invariance, but our model don't have that feature. So the chair somehow, somehow is symmetric, you can guess. Last experiment I'll present is more interesting ones. Uh, we want to play with class interpolation and the viewpoint synthesis at the same time. Basically, it's like a manifold traversal experiments. Let's go to the figure. So given the four chairs of same viewpoint but different style in the first row, we want to um, interpolate, interpolate between these four chairs. Each column, you can see this regular post uh, manifold traversal just we present in the uh, beginning. But for each of the row, you can see this is a style manifold traversal from one chair to the other. You can see that the style changes gradually and smooth, and then the shape is well present, preserved in this case. To conclude, um, our model can achieve high quality 3D view synthesis with a general deep learning model, just from single image. And we also learn this uh, disentangled representation without any class labels, just with recurrent transformation. Also, we find out critical learning training is really helpful for our RN model. Thank you for all time. And uh, please, your questions. Question is, do you have the degree of rotation in the input data? Uh, pardon? You got the mic, please. Uh, my question is, do you have the degree of rotation in the input data? Uh, can you learn it? 
Actually, um, it's similar to that, but we don't have the, the exactly the rotation degree as input. Instead, we have some less quanti um, quantitative um, bits as the action units as input. So it's similar to that. For example, um, the, our one-step rotation usually is a 15 degree. So you can think about, suppose we have the 64, 60 degree, that means it's a four uh, action. Other questions, please? OK, uh, let us thank the speaker again. Uh, with this, uh, this session is concluded. And uh, let me remind you that we reconvene here at 3.30.